Hello and welcome to Mod View. My name is Matt, and you may know me from a video that I did a while ago about improving Skyrim performance. It was quite well received, so thanks for that if you watched it. This video is going to be quite similar because it will be looking at improving the performance of the game, and in this case, we're looking at Borderlands 2. Now, a few months ago, I posted an article on cookingwithgrenades.com about this, and you can find that on there. I'm basically doing a walkthrough of the article in this video today and if you want this in text form you can go and find it in the link in the description. Now we will not actually be installing any mods for this game this time it will all be configurations of the INI file which can be found in your documents I'll get to that later and I'm using the same setup that I used in the first video so I, I still play my games on a laptop it is a mid-range laptop probably. You can find the specs in the description. You can also find the settings that I've got on my version of Borderlands 2. And I have played Borderlands 2 a lot on this laptop. I've completed it twice using these settings. Um, when I first played it, it was quite laggy. But then I changed the settings and I played smoothly all, all the way through the game. Now I've split these changes into three different tiers. The first one being basic changes, second being optional changes, and the third being last resort changes. We're going to start with the basic ones because those are the ones that everyone can do and they won't make that much of a difference to your game. Now I will just say before we start that you should change the video settings on Borderlands 2 before you go around changing the INI file because if you change the settings after editing the INI file it will reset parts of the INI file so you don't really want to go doing that. And if you're worrying about doing this, it is perfectly safe as long as you follow what I'm telling you to do and don't just go around editing random lines because that could break the game. But if that does happen, you can just reinstall the game from Steam and that should fix it. So without further ado, let's begin and take a look at the basic changes. So we're going to start by finding the file that we need to edit and I'm going to show you the path to it on Windows. This is Windows 7 as you can see and I'm in my documents. If you have a different operating system, then you will need to find it yourself. But if you have Windows, it will be here. You go to your documents, you go to My Games and Borderlands 2. And then you go to Willow Game and Config. And it is willowengine.ini. If you double click it, it opens in a text editor like this. And you can see that it's made up of a load of lines of text that you can edit and get different things out of it. So we are going to start with a edit that will change the shadows in the game. So if you press Control and F and type in dynamic shadows equals true and then search you will find not that one here. It's under system settings. This is where you will do most of the editing. And you have a lot of different lines here, but we are going for uh, the one that i just shown you, dynamic shadows equals true. Now all we have to do to turn this off is to change this boolean value to false. And there we go, the dynamic shadows is now off. When we save this and run Borderlands 2 again, it won't have dynamic shadows on. I'll show you how that looks in game. It makes a bit of a difference to the dynamic shadows on characters and things like that, but it isn't really overall that much of a difference and the game still looks alright with it on. The next thing we're going to look at is Bloom and this can be found just down a few lines here. You can control and F it if you want again. It's Bloom equals true, just the same as the other one. So we're going to change the value again to false. And this basically changes the way that light bounces off objects. Um, it's not really necessary, especially if you're trying to raise your frames per second. And so there's not really much bad that can come out of uh, making that false. I'll show you in game again what it looks like activated and deactivated. It is a nice effect, but it's not overall really necessary. And the final change that we're going to make is the light shafts. This is probably the biggest, the most notable thing that is going to be changed here. Uh, it is somewhere here. It says B. Uh, where is it? B allow light shafts. I'm not sure what the B is for. It's a small B and then allow light shafts equals true. 
So we're going to change that to false. And if you look at the sun or the moon or whatever it is on Borderlands 2, you will notice that there are light shafts that come down. If you have something obscure in your view of it, then the light shafts will kind of go around that object. And it's a really nice effect, but again, it's really not necessary. And by looking at the moon when you have this on, you can drop a few frames. So we're going to fix that by turning it off and raise a few frames whenever the moon is in view. I'll show you again what this looks like on and off. But those are the basic changes. I recommend you save this now by going to File and Save. And run Borderlands 2 and see how you like it. Now you can monitor your frames per second with a program called Fraps. You can find a link to that in the description. Just have that running while you play Borderlands 2 and it will show your frames per second in the top left or right or wherever it goes. Now if you do still need some changes done then we will take a look at the optional changes next. So next we have two different changes that will make a bit of a difference. Now the first one is the textures. So if you scroll down, still in the system settings section, there's a lot of S's in that sentence. Um, we can go down to a massive block of text here, which is what we're looking for. It starts with texture group, and then you have the different uh, thing that is changing the textures for. So in this case, world, world, normal map, uh, shadow map, things like that. And there's just a lot of crap after that. The thing that we're looking for is max LOD size equals, and then you have a number. This is the medium, I believe. So what we can do here is we can change this number. It has to be divisible by two, and you can change that to essentially change the quality of the textures. So the first thing that you'll want to do if you want to change this, and I don't have this changed, you can see that mine is set to medium uh, because I didn't really like it when it was changed. You can halve this number and then see how that goes. If it's still laggy, you can half it again, half it again, half it again. Keep halving until it is just too ugly to bear. I had it around 1000, I think, uh, and I didn't really like it, so I just changed it back. It did lose me a few frames, but I can live with that because it, the game looks much better like this anyway. So this is something to experiment with. I'm not actually going to change any of mine but you can just change all the numbers or the starting numbers after max LOD size. There's one for every line down here in this big group. Uh, they get a bit different down here. That's 256 rather than 4096. And you can also change them specifically if you want to change certain things like vehicles and character textures. But that is not for everyone and that is why it's an optional one. So next up we're going to take a look at the outlines around things in the game. Now, Borderlands is pretty much renowned for its interesting art style, and part of that is the outlines that appear when you look into the sky and things to set the landscape. It's quite hard to explain the actual effect that it, that it gives, but uh, the images will show you that really. But I have this turned off in my game because it actually saves me a few frames. And this is really a, a very optional thing because it kind of changes the art style of the game, but it does give you better frames. So it's up to you if you want to do this. What you're going to have to do is type in Willow Scene Post Process and go up this time because it's above. It is not in the System Settings uh, section. So we will find that, and it's a quite a long line here. We have default post process name equals willow engine materials dot willow scene post process. And this is the line that defines the line outlining thing. Um, so if we change this line, there will no longer be outlines around things. So we're going to change one word, which is willow, on this final part here, and we're going to change that to Ryan. I'm not sure why it's Ryan, I don't know if it can be any other word, but this is what I found, and I did find this on Reddit, by the way, by a person called Mr. Luke, so thanks to him for that. It's quite an interesting change, and go ahead now and go into your game and see how it runs, if it's better now, after changing the settings, the textures, and the, uh, the outlines. Those are two things that will change the game quite dramatically in the way it looks. 
but uh, if it's going to get you some more frames and it's probably worth it if you're running on a low-end PC. And so next we are going to go back to the system settings area. Let's find that again. Uh, it's down here somewhere. There it is. And we're going to find one line which is a bit odd, really. Um, this is definitely not, not for everyone, so don't edit this just while I'm telling you this, because I will tell you exactly what's going to happen. Basically, we're going to find dynamic lights. This is above dynamic shadows. It will be set to true. And if you want to do this, you'll set it to false. But don't do that yet, because I'll explain what's actually going to happen if you do. So dynamic lights is going to actually change pretty much all the lighting effects in the game. And that is going to change the game very dramatically. Basically, it's going to change the shadows in the game, so you won't have any shadows unless it's baked onto the map. And also, it will, sh it will uh, change things like inventory screens, so that you won't actually be able to see the object that you're see looking at in the inventory. You'll only get an outline of the in inventory, and like, for example, in loading screens, this is where uh, it uses these light effects as well. You wouldn't really expect it to. It has the normal loading screen, but there's usually a gun spinning, and this will be completely black uh, if you change this to false. It won't ruin the game. I haven't played the game with this off, um, because I couldn't bear it after a few minutes, honestly. It looks very ugly, and it's not really what you'd expect. Uh, it might be worth just turning it off just to see um, how it runs and how you like it. But I would really not recommend playing with this unless you really want to get a frame rate boost. Like I said, this is the last resort. So if you're still running at a low frame rate, try this, I guess. But it's definitely not for everyone. So when you're done with this, I'm keeping it as true for me. Uh, you go into, into File, Save, and just run the game as normal. Like I said, you can find the link to Fraps in the description, and you can download that to monitor your frame rate while you play. And you can also find my system settings and system, along with the written version of this. So I'm going to stop here now. If I find any more interesting edits to the INI files, I will let you know, and I will put them in the description and in the comments, and also on the written version of the post. But for now, that's all from me, so thanks for watching, please like, favourite and subscribe for more like this. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments, and I'll try my best to answer them. But for now, goodbye.